Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in this week to Queer Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Rose, and this is episode number six, and it originally premieres on YouTube, queerculture.com, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, and it is supported by our Patreon supporters. This week, I am excited to introduce our very special guest, Illusion, who is a Twitch streamer, and welcome. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day. And this episode, we're going to be talking about bipan erasure, myths around people who identify as queer, and a little bit of like other LGBT related topics. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for and having me. To, I want to say, did you want to give you a second to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Resolution Illusion, or Illusion for short, online, and I use she, her pronouns. I identify as queer, or bi, or pan, depending on my audience, yes. which we'll probably get into that later on. <laughs> so that's me. Yes, I love that. Um, so I'm very interested. What is your username from? Because whenever I see your name, I always think that it's like, I always want to say Blue Illusion. And I know that's not it, but like, now we're having some like deja vu here. So. <laughs> yeah, um, it was just something I came up with when I was kind of going through this transitional phase in my life where I was uh, rebranding myself online. Uh, reopening all my social media accounts to do Twitch streaming. And I wanted something that was an alliteration. And I didn't think about how people were going to have to pronounce it and say it all the time. But in my head, it sounded cool. So Yes, I definitely have had <laughs> rebranded myself more than once. And you always, you never know how someone's going to butcher your name or... I feel like that's part of the queer experience. <laughs> and I love that. So let's kind of start back at the beginning. There'll be some like ins and outs here and there that aren't always in order. But do you remember how you came out or like when you came out? Yeah, so my coming out story is a little more complicated than I think a lot of other people's. Uh, I think that many people have that experience of coming out to their family, coming out to their friends, coming out to other people in their life. And mine was kind of messy. Uh, once I realized um, I identified as, at that time, bisexual, uh, I just basically told my friends, I was like, yeah, I think I like women too. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and that was it. Uh, and I told my cousins who are around my age as well and one of them outed me to my parents oh so i was kind of forced to just kind of explain it like on the fly like i didn't really get that magical experience of uh, maybe not magical maybe it's magical to me because i didn't get to have it of uh like telling my parents on my own terms so it was kind of yeah, that I feel like that's like now with like the political climate of coming out, there's different laws in like Florida about like the don't say gay bill. I don't live in the state, so like I can't fully like I'm not fully involved in like how complex it is, but from my understanding, like schools can out children to their parents by law they have to or something. Um, I don't know the complexity of it. That was my... Sure. I know that the Don't Say Gay Bill is more geared towards early education and basically just straight up not acknowledging um, homosexuality as existing. You can't even discuss it. Like, say a teacher is in a same-sex relationship. They can't explain, like, that person. And like why they are with them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's better um, clarification. Like yeah. I feel like I understood it like more, but like I can't explain it. But there are so many laws right now happening. Yes. That it's hard to keep up. 
It's kind of a lot. So I feel like I kind of missed a question. Are you okay. out as bi now or queer? Yeah, so like I was mentioning kind of at the beginning, I <laughs> use different labels depending on my audience. So okay. like to myself and to other queer people, I'll use the term queer. Um, to older folks or people who aren't in the community, I will use bisexual. And um, I'm also kind of trying to bring in pansexual because I feel like that is a label that is more accurate to my experience and one that I want to represent, you know. Yeah. So. So I kind of like when I format my podcasts, I always like to be able to have like the people that listen be involved with them in some way. So like if you were to like time travel back to high school, where what kind of a seat would you have sat at? Like what table? Right. So I had a few tables actually. Yes. <laughs> I was at the um, like punk and like metal kids table um, kind of earlier on in high school. And then later on, I was at the, the queer table with all the LGBTQ folks um, because I became the president of the GSA. And so That's that cool. kind of became my group. Yeah. That's lucky that you had that in your high school. Like, yeah. That's very progressive. Like, and I feel like I use like this example, not just because I love like high school themed genre, but <laughs> like the breakfast club, the faculty, <laughs> but like, I feel like when people listen, if they can see if they can relate to you, it kind of like makes it like more immersive. It's like, I see that person, I connect with them more, yeah. or maybe I should have connected more with that person. It's like, right. I really like that. So we met, and just kind of throwing that out there, we met through Twitch streaming and mm -hmm. through that community, which I really like. Um, yeah. And that's actually kind of what got me into starting my podcast a little bit. And it's like, this is like a good method for me to like use all of my skills to be like, do what I want to do. Totally. Um... Do you have any regrets coming out or is it, I guess, like being forced to like? Uh, no, I think that the way that I came out in the end, you know, once everything kind of yeah. <laughs> smoothed out, um, was actually a good thing. And it informed my experience of being a queer person. Uh, and it kind of, when I'm I don't want to say mentoring but when I am meeting other queer people who are telling me like hey like I identify as this or I'm thinking about coming out and all that I feel like it helps me kind of say like keep that sacred as much as you can because Someone can just take it from you um, because it is kind of a unique, unique experience to being LGBTQ um, is that whole coming out and letting people yeah. know. And you get to do it on your own terms, hopefully. Oh, knock um, on wood. Yeah, <laughs> knock on wood. And so when people do come to me, you know, and anyone is welcome to come out to me. I've had people come out to me throughout my entire life, ever since I've been out as um, a queer person, I, yeah, don't mind mentoring people. Like I, I, I think that's saying, like, like a mentoring. huge like passing the torch like moment. Yes, and exactly. I love that. G G, yeah. when you came out, did you have a lot of support with your friends, family? Uh, my friends, yeah, like I said, they were like, oh yeah, okay. like you know, just another day, like which in of itself felt supportive because it's like, oh, I'm not that weird then. Yeah. And, you know, you're already feeling like awkward and strange in high school. Like, so that was good. Uh, my family, um, just because of its like own toxic dynamic, it was kind of used yeah. as a pawn in certain aspects. And then 
um, it, it did kind of make that dynamic a little more complicated, but my dad um, has always been super supportive. And honestly, I think they've probably forgotten. Yeah. I think that the, <laughs> it's just become like a part of our family dynamic is like, oh yeah, she's, sometimes she's with this person, sometimes she's with that person. You know? that. Did you, yeah. so this is kind of like a tie-in with that question, but do you mm-hmm. have any family that are also LGBT that you're aware of? Yeah. So uh, the person who outed me it actually eventually came out as gay. And the reason that he outed me is because he was trying to divert from uh, his own oh, Okay, like kind of <laughs> testing identity, the water so, yeah. is but also bad person <laughs> uh, so like i can understand why people do but like i don't agree with outing other people and that's yeah. hard yeah. when you came out you had a gsa in your high school so uh the person that i was dating in high school she started it and i joined so we kind of formed it together ish like she kind of got the ball rolling and i um took over as like president so um it was a struggle it it was not easy yeah <laughs> we're so yeah. like do you remember like so like this like your high school era did you have a lot of access to information on lgbt topics or were you that information yeah, so I had to spend a lot of time educating myself so that I could educate my peers uh, about everything. It was <laughs> it was a lot. Uh, yeah, just everything from the you know what all the different letters mean to different types of uh, attraction and all the things that encompass. Um, the queer experience uh we would go to like conferences and things like that um to learn so we would come to the city and like take classes on like different queer topics and network with different organizations uh and then our group kind of got really involved in like lobbying for um queer issues, um, lobbying for marriage equality, things like that. So. Okay, so this is before gay marriage was legalized in the States. Yeah. And that's why. Early 2000s. Think about. Yeah. Because like, I remember like gay marriage became legalized in like 2004, 2005 in Canada. So, mm-hmm. like, it was a very different social climate for that year. Like, it just became like it's legalized and that's it. Yeah, we were jealous. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's so much. Like, I was so lucky that that happened. It's neat that, like, in part of your GSA, for people listening that may not be familiar with that is, GSA is a gay straight mm-hmm. alliance that yeah. can provide education, information, a safe space for LGBT people. Sometimes they require having a teacher. Did you have mm-hmm. supervision or was it just like your own group oh yeah sorry (laughs) i didn't mean to interrupt uh yeah so we did have a teacher um she was extremely supportive um very hands-off in that she was like i just want you guys to you know create whatever space that works for you all use my classroom you know during these hours and um if you ever need to like do anything bigger which eventually did happen we did things like day of silence night of noise all that um we would need to get like the principal involved so she would come to bat for us for that reason oh that's really cool yeah that's yeah we were really lucky i like that because like we had like i'm just thinking back like in my high school experience like we had that ours was called kangaroo in japanese mm-hmm. And it was like our gay straight alliance. And but like ours was like also like focused on like education, but like it was kind of like a subset of the sex ed class that we had in our school. So it was wow. like also like 
partially funded by that from my like vague memory which is like <laughs> neat and we did a dance one day like once at like a community center oh, wow. with like 10 people <laughs> it was cute, oh, cute small town but like now it's gotten a lot better for that do you have any advice that you would want to give people coming out now in 2022? Man, wow. It's such a different environment from like what I came out in. And I think you can probably relate to that as yeah. well. Uh, I Take your time. Like, don't feel pressured to come out just because whatever is telling you that you need to just tell everybody now. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, keep it sacred. Like, it's, you know, it's yours to do with as you want. And um, you get to make that experience what it is. And you're going to constantly be coming out to people your whole life. Yeah. Like, it's never going to change. Mm -hmm. But... When you do that first, like, big, like, coming out, like, yeah, just take your time with it and, like, enjoy it that you're going to be supported by the people that really do care about you and you're yeah. going to find the people that don't. <laughs> I think that is so important because we're lucky that we live in a social climate where you don't necessarily need to come out to be yourself. And I think that is, like, I value, too, like, when I came out, like, I just started my transition and that was that. It's just like, okay, that's cool. Like, I don't really need, like, I updated my, like, pronouns in my bio description and then just kind of moved on with life. And then, like, I got the email from my mom, like, years later, they'd be like, I noticed you changed your pronoun. Like, you're like, it says she on your Facebook profile. Is that something? Okay, I guess you're my daughter now. And that was it. Even though I did tell her in high school, it kind of, I still didn't really know and have the means to do what I wanted to do until later in life, but that was neat. Um, part of my podcast, I like to also like touch in on like religion, spirituality. Is that something that's like a part of your life or? Uh, so I'm an atheist. Um, I don't ascribe to like any particular belief system. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that there's anything wrong with anyone who does. Uh, I have kind of started to explore more spiritual-esque stuff just because I think that that's a healthy way to, like, navigate the world and yeah. what have you. But, um, yeah, I don't have any like religious beliefs um both my parents are religious and i think that they just assumed that they instilled that in me but they never really <laughs> did they never did. went on their way to like <laughs> take me to church or anything uh, but when i have conversations with them it's uh always funny because there is that tone in it of like well you know so all of us christians and i'm like be clear yeah <laughs> Do you think any of, like, religion has affected your journey? Or, like... Um, well, I mean, obviously, I live in a country that's, you know, informed by a lot of Judeo-Christian values. Uh, so I would say that that has affected the way that people um, approach me. And uh, the way that I have to have relationships with other people, too, just because it's very, like, informed by, like, you can only be with this one person, and it must be this way, and you must get married, and you must do this, you know. So, I guess, in that way? Yeah, that or, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Like, do you think, now I'm kind of, like, speaking on, like, the spirituality side, how do you, like... Because, like, I feel like there's, like, a lot of, like, queer trauma. Is that yeah. something that you've ever had in your life or, like, experience? Yes. I think that <laughs> my, uh, 
Vi and Pan people can definitely speak to this. Uh, we have a lot of um, trauma when it comes to our own community that we've belonged to. The B in the LGBT is us. It, we're there. Like, and, and we're then. constantly having to prove ourselves. And I mean, I have so many instances of like being bashed by other gay people and other sometimes even bisexual or pan people and it's wild to me it makes me kind of nervous sometimes to like get involved in queer spaces especially when i was you know younger i was so involved and then the older i got the more i felt pushed out of it and i i, I kind of always stay on the fringe because I, I don't feel like I fully belong. And I think that's where it... I feel like there's a lot of gatekeeping in the community. Yes. And it's like... There's a lot of like tokenism, like gold car lesbians, or... Yeah. That's a huge thing. And yeah. like, probably even within like the bisexual community, I could feel that rubbing off as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Do you think being bi in that space, is that like a positive or like a negative or like irrelevant? <laughs> um, just being bisexual in general in the queer community or? Uh, yeah, like or do you find it ever complicates a relationship? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I have so many instances. I... Every single relationship, it obviously affects that significantly um, in so many different ways. Uh, if I'm with a straight, this man, you know, everybody assumes I'm straight. And if I'm with a woman or a non-binary person, or a trans person. People assume that I'm gay. And sometimes the people that I'm dating assume one or the other. There's, there's so much assumptions. It, that's just like, in of itself, its own thing. <laughs> I, I love that. So okay. before I did this podcast last week, I did an episode with my friend Stephen, who came out in the 60s. And they were saying that when he was in the 70s, he remembers a whole genre of people being fake bisexual for like attention, which is, I guess, how people remained relevant. And that kind of had a huge wave back into 20, like the early, late 2000s. With people mm -hmm. being bisexual for attention or fake bisexuality. Yeah. I don't know how much of this I'm repeating, so like I apologize to people in the podcast if I already said this. I'm losing <laughs> track of my own conversation. But no with that, do you find that people will also fetishize the idea of being bi to be like, oh sweet, two girls or is that something that you've ever... Yeah. I actually, like, wrote a little bit of notes on this um, just to, like, mentally prepare for this podcast. And a big part of that is the fetish fetishization that we experience is, especially as a female-identifying bi or pan person, is huge. Uh Anytime I'm in a relationship with a straight man, the conversation always comes up. It's like, so, ooh, you're bisexual, huh? And it's like, no. I have a rule, which is, if you want that to happen, that is all gonna have to be on you. And you figure that out. And I do that because I know that no woman is ever <laughs> Yeah. Go for it. Uh, unicorn hunting, uh, for anyone who isn't familiar, it's basically uh, usually a couple, heterosexual generally, who is looking for a third 
And that person is usually someone like myself who is a cis, you know, by person. And we're called unicorns because we don't really exist. Like we're never going to engage in that yeah. <laughs> act with anybody. We're not interested in threesomes with heterosexual couples. Most of us are not. If they are, if we are, we will come to you. We will come find you. But <laughs> it's Which, never going to happen. So like, are you like, that is like a huge point. Like I get people that message me about that. Sometimes like, it's interesting. Yeah. I've actually had a lot of couples that will message me. Which is like, okay, I'm flattered, but not today. I'm not, maybe <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day it'll be like a YOLO moment. Sure, yeah. But you but, get to do that on your terms because, yeah. yeah, you'll have your pick of anybody that you want because it's like a big Which is thing. nice when you have options. It's like, it is, exactly, <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is what I want to do today. Yeah. But like... <laughs> I think, like, that's good. Before, like, I get... Because there's so much, like, fetishism within these spaces, the kind of... Do you... have any, like, venues near your area that are for this crowd, like, gay bars, or... Is that big in your area? Not as much as it used to be. Um, we do have a couple of... Uh like gay male bars downtown uh which are very much open to anybody uh but typically you'll see um gay men there uh there's a gay male strip club as well <laughs> so that's a space that's uh queer friendly there's also um it's kind of marketed almost as like a buy bar on certain nights uh but it's still kind of yeah just like a queer bar that's like uh, a lot of venues i think it's good business when they do it properly is having yeah. themed nights like yes that can be really good to give life into an establishment yeah because so people listening if you are entrepreneurs in this space theme nights can be really good for your business yes but like pick it on like don't like cancel the regular night to do that but that's something like that's a different conversation totally. um i do have a few do you have any lgbt themed favorite movies oh <laughs> gosh um but you're a cheerleader. I was trying to remember the name of it. Oh my god, that's such a good movie. Yeah, that one's a classic. I I love that. I can watch that one over and over again. That oh, RuPaul gosh. did a cameo in that movie. Yes. And I love that. So it's a for people that don't know the plot of that movie. Did you want to explain it or? Uh, either is fine. Um. Yeah, I can explain it. Okay. Uh. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you want to explain it? Do I explain it? Oh god, <laughs> I can, nervous. but like, I'm happy to have you. It's a great movie. Uh, so basically, the main character, uh, she is sent off to a conversion camp because uh, her parents find out that she's a lesbian, and she gets there, and just everybody is very just openly gay, and it's just kind of a failure it, it's kind of satire about gay conversion camps and kind of makes it look like this silly thing um especially considering it's kind of like a really intense topic in yeah. the community so uh it's just kind of making fun of all that and the concept and like you said yeah there's rule Ru rupaul's in it um actress uh the main um person uh, she ended up being in Orange is the New Black. I remember that, like, later on. Um, I think her name's, like, Natalie something? It's a cult classic. It's, like, really campy. Yeah, it like, it's one that I, I watched it probably, like, two months ago recently. Oh, It's just nice. one of those movies that it's easy for me to, like, watch. 
Yeah. That like I like. Um, I do have a few other questions. I lose track of my head about like, did I say this? Did I scroll too far past? Because oh, I do have you... like four pages of notes. Oh, wow. um, I do also again want to thank you for taking time out for me to be able to interview you for this podcast. Like I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, because it's been taking like I think you messaged me like right when I did like my first and second podcast and I was like, Yes. yes. Finally. And then my computer had problems, so it took me time to be like, Okay, we're back. We're <laughs> back. Um actually I think this is kind of going back like Six months ago, you were one of the first people that ever gave me a compliment. And so, like, I updated my profile picture on Discord. Mm -hmm. And you commented on it. And that's something that I've always remembered. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was just, like, the smallest Aww. thing. It was just something that I just, Aww. like, always paid attention to. And they, I was so excited because I just changed my picture because I was playing with my camera settings. And I was like, this is really fun. Like... Yay! Yeah, I'm doing something right. Oh, um, that, that impacted you. That makes me happy. And what did you find? Like, there was like a separating yourself from your sexual orientation. Like, did you find any? Like, is that something that you can do easily, or is it like? Yeah, I think I get what you're, yeah, getting at. Um, it is very complicated, and uh, it it has evolved over time. So, when I was younger, it was just, oh wow, I'm attracted to the same gender, you know, and that was a revelation in of itself. And then later on, it was. Oh, like there are trans people in my life and I'm attracted to them as well and non-binary people and you know I would end up in relationships with people who uh would transition. I've been in relationships where the person transitioned while we were in the relationship and uh you know it was it really um challenged that like orientation in my mind i'm like do i care what gender this person is is that really relevant no it, it isn't it i i still am attracted to the human being i'm not attracted to mm -hmm. like oh they're this and that isn't to say there wasn't times where i was like well i you know i knew you as this and now you're who you are now who you really are as a human being and it was you know it was messy and you know it was when I was like less educated on that kind of stuff so that happened you know went through that period of my life and now I'm in this period of life where I'm realizing that there's more than just um romantic and sexual attraction um I think those are the things that we talk about um most often um, mostly just sexual attraction. Yeah, I honestly. feel like I was lucky that it kind of transitioned kind of on my own that yeah. it didn't really affect relationships but like if you for people like if you were straight and you were dating someone and then they changed genders like that would also like give people like that would make them like really conflicting with their like sexual orientation depends which way the person that like that could be going like mm -hmm. if you're dating someone that was male the transition to female or female to non-binary or female to male like that could be like yeah well how did out of curiosity how did you meet do you remember the first trans person you met Good question. I think there was people in high school that um, later on, um, you know, came out as trans. Um, 
the first trans person I knew personally um, was someone that I dated. But the first trans person I met, it must have been at one of the conferences I went to. And okay. they were teaching a class on like what it meant to be trans. And oh, that's yeah. really neat. Yeah. I like, because for me, like growing up, like I was that person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I didn't know anybody else like me until there was access to the internet. And then the internet opened up like so many more opportunities for that. Yeah. Um, now I'm just do now let's kind of like do you have a favorite like LGBT artist that you're really interested in like music or any kind of artist that is on like the LGBT aspect oh my gosh that's a huge question <laughs> <laughs> um It's so funny to me because I I feel like I probably do, but now that I'm put on the spot, I'm like, who? Who could that be? Uh I was reading something from Audrey Lord the other day. That's definitely someone that's a big inspiration. Um, she's an author, um, an activist or she was many things. She was her own human being. And I love that. Yeah, she was very out and very proud in a time where that was just... That's like... Being out can be like a farce. Like, it's like strong. Especially yeah. when it's not like our time. Like, yeah. And to have a platform can be like... Yeah. Well, they were like tiki torches. Yeah. So, like, you do you remember any like major like historical events? Like, um, like do you remember like hearing about like Matthew Shepard growing up or? Yeah. I guess um, that's like a really sad question. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. <laughs> I mean, but that was yeah. Uh, part of being lgbtq at that time was yeah finding out about the death of matthew shepherd and uh just yeah that was a huge impact did um, any of your school get affected by that because um well we did do day of silence which is a mem remembrance of him it's the day that he um was killed that, um, you know, is like symbolic of that. So I, I think in that way it impacted folks. Um, when we did that event, um, it happened to coincide with homecoming. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> and more people were talking about our event than homecoming. That, oh, that, oh wow, that's really progressive. Yeah, because, because everybody's like, why are all these people not talking? Blah, 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 you know, and like it oh, wow. just made a huge impact on people. Um, that was like one of my proudest moments at that particular time in my life. I was like, wow. And like the news was talking about it. And yeah, it was like a really big deal. So that's like a hugely progressive like moment because that happened. What like so like they died, I think, in 1999. So, like, that was, like, what, 23 years ago? So yeah. I'm assuming your school didn't happen. Like, that was probably, like, 2000-something. I graduated in 2006, so. so. Like, that's, like, that's huge. Yeah. That is, like, that gives me, like, so much chills. Yeah. Because that was, like, really, like, when I was in that time frame, like, people compared me to them. And mm. that's, like, really creepy. Yeah. But like that's like really dark, like when people be like, yeah. you could be the next person. I was like, I don't want to be that person. But like yeah. seeing like how much like positives comes from it, it's like really nice. 
Yeah. Like, that's, like, bigger than, like, you could ever imagine. That's huge. Um, do you, ha I have a few more questions before, if you want to, like, have, like, any random discourse. But, sure. like, do you have any advice that you'd want to give to younger you? Or the next version of you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, if I could tell my younger self so many things. Gosh, we could be here for hours. Uh, yeah, I wish I could just let my younger self know that, you know, it does get better. And that's just generally not just yeah. being, you know, out as queer. But, yeah, that life does get better and that... Uh, you do become like a really strong person who, you know, goes through a lot of really difficult things and comes out the other side a better person and that you don't have to um, bring anybody down with you. And that's really important. Overcome that. Yeah. Um, as I know you said like science earlier, I, like you referenced that, like, and like, do you have any predictions for the future? that you want to see? I don't know. I'm really bad at predicting the future. <laughs> <laughs> I saw um, the episode that you had done with uh, Miss Damon and <laughs> all the predictions they made were just, I was like, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to see. Maybe I should get into the like nano crystals or whatever. <laughs> uh, but maybe 3d printing that's kind of i mean we're already like doing that but i i think it's gonna keep evolving. the next level that's gonna keep going to the next level i i would love to see like 3d printing like skin cells and like yeah. bones and like the neck like that would be huge like at a, like a at an accessible level not like a gpu shortage level like yeah you go to the hospital and it's like that Right. Like, That'd you don't cool. need to, like, it's like you go in, you break something, you come out and it's fixed. Like, you don't have to wait that, like, three months, three years to not be huge. Yeah. I That'd love that. Um, what is something that you wish was free? Just one thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, if I have to pick just one thing, I think it would be housing. Healthcare, everyone. Yeah, healthcare would be good too. Yeah, especially in the United States. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, I missed. What was your first answer? Oh, housing. Housing. Oh, yeah. yes, that's huge. Do yeah. you pay attention to any of the housing projects in your area? Uh, yeah, I got a degree in community development, so. That is kind of my wheelhouse. <laughs> I love. I'm. I really love tiny homes, like mm. and like backyard homes. And now we have like cottage homes that have just recently gotten legalized here. Oh, so yeah. it's like Toronto's definition. In my interpretation: it's Toronto's definition of legalizing tiny homes, but with the Toronto spin. Mm. So it's like backyard dwellings or cottages that are now. People renovating their garages to make them living spaces. And that's cool. Yeah. There's a lot of people who have done that over the past like ten years since I've lived here. Like where I live, like you have to have like a million dollars to buy a house. Like mm -hmm. it's not obtainable for the average person. No. And it's like it's really sad. It's so sad. <laughs> no. <laughs> this isn't the like utopia our parents dreamed of for us. No. <laughs> like, I wish, but no. Are you currently working on or doing any projects right now? Uh, I'm trying to get my, like, YouTube going and um, trying to figure out, like, what kind of videos I even want to make for that. I, I just kind of turn on the camera sometimes and talk and things come out. So that's where the stage I'm at with my, like, YouTube. Um, I'm always working on streaming, obviously. You're never not working on streaming when you're a streamer. Yeah. Uh, 
So those are kind of the two main things I'm working on. I've taken a break from a lot of my creative projects. Um, you can see back there all of my like craft supplies. Yes. I really uh, like um, YouTube because there's so much into it. Like you can find everything. Yeah. Like, literally everything and a how to for most things as well. So it's mm -hmm. like when you find something that's like specifically you, like my YouTube channel is kind of a conglomerate of everything that I like. Yeah. Like I throw in like some random videos. Hopefully the people listening don't get mad when I throw up random review videos or my impressions of random things that aren't specific to one topic. But mm -hmm. I like those one off videos because it keeps me grounded too. Like yeah. when it's just like having fun and the more videos you do, the better your editing gets or like your production and like there's like hopefully improvement between the next process. Um, I do have, I think a few more questions as mm -hmm. I lose my own thought. <laughs> do you have any post pandemic ambitions? Ooh. Uh, yeah, just getting like reconnected to society in general, I think is a big one. And I'm just traveling more, hopefully, safely as I can. Safely. That's... Yeah. I guess, like, Obviously, that'll take a while. Did COVID stop you from doing anything in the last two years? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Travel was probably the biggest one. Um, and, um, yeah, just spending time with friends and family that those were probably the two. Yes. Um, is there any other random questions or topics that you wanted to talk about before we finish the podcast? Um, sure. I feel um, like I'll give you ahead. the floor and then I'll throw in random commentary. I'll like okay. Sure, yeah. Um Yeah, I kind of wanted to like discuss a lot of myths that people have around um like bi and pan people. Um a lot of people have this perception that it's just a phase. That's yeah. probably the biggest one. Or it's like a lesbian in waiting or a gay man in waiting where they're just not quite there yet. And that does happen. Um, but I think it's very, I don't want to say rare. I think it's mm -hmm. less common than people make it out to be. Um, people think that we're confused. Like, oh, you're really just straight, or you're really just gay, or you're really just, you know. And um, also... I think another really big one is uh, that people have this conception that we're like hypersexual and we're greedy and that we just want to sleep with everyone and we're going to cheat on you and we're going to do all these like evil things. Like if you're in a relationship with a bisexual person. <laughs> that's so like, that speaks so much volume to other people than you, for example, or like a bisexual person. It's like, Trust is really important to have in any dynamic. Yes. And like, okay, like trusted communication. Like, if you don't have those two things, like, what's the foundation of like anything else moving forward? It's like, exactly. It's like you can be like bisexual and you can be a hoe, but like they're not like exclusively connected to each other. Like, they're two no. separate things. Like, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Period. Um, um, I know we were, like, so I did a podcast that will be airing on Monday with my friend Stephen. And, like, another point that we just also talked about was that with a lot of lesbians and, like, bi people at the same time, we're also, you haven't met a real man. Yeah. It's, like, which is so mm -hmm. strange, like doesn't work like that but no <laughs> yeah there isn't 
some magical person that's going to convert you to being straight or being gay or whatever. That has always just boggled my mind that people even think that. And yeah, <laughs> I've heard lesbians tell me that many times. Oh, I did quickly find the set of questions that I forgot to ask. How do you heal or disconnect from the world when you need time for yourself? Sure. Um, yeah, I'm someone that's like very focused on that. Uh, someone who's experienced a lot of trauma and um, have PTSD. So I have all kinds of coping skills and ways to, um, yeah, kind of heal. Probably the biggest one is video games. I love video games so much and they always kind of just take me out of whatever is happening and I can um, just focus on the story or focus on, you know, the goal of the game. That's probably a big one. Um, I like uh, listening to like podcasts and like going for a walk. Um, going Just going for a walk generally is kind of, something that really uh, walking is nice yeah helps me center myself and i did also like have you have you being your authentic self has that ever put you at risk for harm because of that like a crime based mm. um yes and no uh i think anytime i'm in a queer space yes um outside of that no because i i do yes have the straight passing privilege um you know i can be like oh here's a man and i'm with him and you know <laughs> uh <laughs> so i do have that but uh, yeah um it has uh put me in situations where I've dealt with like aggression like I had mes mentioned before like from my own community where people will be like oh yeah you're bisexual like get out of here like you don't belong here like I've been at bars and stuff where people are like why are you here I'm like uh <laughs> like this is a public space and I'm allowed to be here and they're like you're not gay and I'm like what <laughs> so like, that's really weird if someone's like also forcing you to come out at the same time like yeah yeah because i don't present as like butch so they automatically assume like oh you're just straight then it's like um uh, like there's all kinds of you know gender presentations that like doesn't automatically like connect to my sexual orientation and then i yeah so i think that's kind of where i've experienced harm i guess or like the possibility yeah have you ever seen your or helped anybody else come out yes yeah i've um had lots of people come out to me i have never said, oh, come out to me, <laughs> other than earlier in this podcast. It's probably the first time I've ever said that. Uh, so, yeah, um, just by, like, being out and being myself, um, I think has opened the doors for people to come to me and say, you know, I think I'm bisexual. I think I'm gay. I think I'm trans. Um, and, yeah, I just kind of help them in that journey and just say, hey, yeah, it's cool. Like, I try to treat it like it's normal because it is. Mm -hmm. Whatever you know, they present to me. I I just am generally supportive and that usually allows people to just come out and be themselves over time. Oh, that's good. I think I have. So did we want to go back? Uh, sorry, I kind of cut you off mm. when I got like, it's like I found like a whole wall of questions. I was, oh, no, you're good. Kind of like diverted the conversation away. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Um... I know there's, like, so much that, like, can be talked about. Yeah. Um, as someone who is queer, I can definitely tell you it's not simple. It's very complex, and there's so many layers to it. And um, 
I definitely enjoy like discussing these kinds of topics with other people who are queer. So it's cool. I think they're really important conversations to have. And like, hopefully they help other people. Yeah. And I do. Is it hard for you to find people to date? Yes. Is that because (laughs) of like location or? No. (laughs) Mood. Um, Yeah, it's just, it's very complicated. Um. I, I live in a very queer friendly city. Um so that in of itself is not a big deal um to be like out and be um queer. But yeah, like straight people um or well, I'm thinking straight men specifically. Again, it's that whole, like, fetishization of, like, oh, I can be with you and then you'll, like, sleep with a woman and it'll be great, you know. And then, um, like, if I try to date um, lesbians, they only want a gold star lesbian. And (laughs) I'm not a gold star (laughs) lesbian. Like, that's just a matter of fact. Um, which I don't know if we need to define what that is for folks. We but... can't. A gold star lesbian to people in the audience that are listening is someone that hasn't had sex with a man or yeah. a trans woman. Right. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't have... Was assigned male at birth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Do you have any personal hobbies or things that people may not know about you? Um, I mean, online, I'm definitely, like, really open about the fact that I'm a super space nerd. I'm really into that kind of stuff. Um, And you've been, like, posting things for me to look at, which makes me happy. Yes. Um, Let's see. Other hobbies. Hmm. I like to volunteer. Um, I haven't been doing that as much recently uh, just because my job is like really intense, but I like to get involved in the community and like get out there and do that kind of stuff. Um, what drawed you into liking space? Like, is there something mm-hmm. that, what gravitated you towards that? Uh, sure. Uh, growing up, it was a hobby that me and my dad would share. Uh, so we would go outside, uh, and where I lived, the sky was, um, without any light pollution. So it was just, you know, beautiful. So we would just lay out and look up at the sky for hours and hours. Uh, and we'd go to the, uh, observatory. There was one near, our, um, where I lived. So we would do that. And then as I got older, um, just learning like the science behind it all and, um, I took astronomy in college um, as like my science elective or whatever and got to, I guess, in that regard, when I'm talking about spirituality, that's kind of where I get my spiritual connection is um, just realizing one's connection to the greater universe and yeah. um, just having like that perspective of how small we are but also how big we are at the same time. I like, for like spirituality, I really, I'm drawn to energy. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like really important. So it's not like religion, just like energy and like space and like being. And Mm -hmm. I feel like there's like that, like whole like aspect of like the world and the universe and the galaxy. And like, so fascinating and so beautiful to look at. But like where I live, we have light pollution yeah. So I don't see the sky. Like, I see the moon, but, like, that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see stars. Which right. is sad, because I used to growing up. Like, you could mm-hmm. see everything. Living on the Pacific Ocean, but not anymore. Yeah. Not <laughs> anymore. Do you have a favorite life hack? Favorite life hack? Oh, my gosh. I probably have so many. The closest one is I have all of my cords like tied up together with these so like my headphone cord i can't drag it any further but 
I like put the cords through these and then clip it to my desk and then I never lose them. Yeah. Oh, those are really useful. Like I keep those for like hanging things on like. Yeah. Which is like, yes. Yeah. I have too many. <laughs> um, is there any other questions that you wanted to discuss before I end? Hmm. Oh, you know, there was something I really wanted to talk about. Uh, I, I'm always I'm that way too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I recently have been kind of exploring this topic of um, the various types of attraction that we can have as human beings to each other. Mm -hmm. And I watched this video. Um, it's from Evie Lupine. And she's a, like sex educator and um she does lots of videos about kink and bdsm specifically but she is uh asexual so um she did this video about um the she says five different types of attraction and it just like blew my mind wide open as far as like my sexual orientation and like what it means <laughs> Uh, so she talks about, um, let's see. So there's sexual attraction, there's romantic attraction, platonic attraction, aesthetic attraction, and sensual attraction. So, uh, obviously like romantic attraction, you know, you fall in love with somebody. Mm -hmm. Sexual attraction, you just, you know, want to have sex with that person. <laughs> um, sensual attraction is where you want to be like physical with that person, but you don't necessarily like want to have sex with them. You just want to like be like intimate with that person in like a physical way, but not necessarily like sexual. Um, and then platonic is, um, you know, like a friendship, but like mm -hmm. a deeper friendship. Uh, and I've started to learn about queer platonic relationships. I don't know if you know much about those. I think, but. Like you would see them a lot in older gay couples, like, 20 yeah. years ago, because, like, gay marriage was legal back then, and there was a lot of, like, people, like, covering for each other by being in that mm -hmm. kind of dynamic, which... It's very... It's not relevant, really, in 2022 as much. Yeah. I like it, but, like... Yeah. I, I was like, wow, yeah, I could... I could just like have a relationship that is like a friendship, but also like this more like defined thing. Like that sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, I like it. Like it's neat because it's kind of like a safe space, like to because yes. it's like it's a companionship, but Yeah. Yeah. So that's that. been something that's really interesting to explore because um I I don't tend to like have um always necessarily like sexual feelings for um like female identifying folks um but I I do have like a really intense like romantic attraction to them and like a sensual attraction and I I used to always like beat myself up about it because I'm like well am I really like bisexual if I'm not like wanting to sleep with both all the time every day blah, 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 you know and uh so it's really kind of like opened my eyes a lot to realize like like no you really are it just it is represented differently for different people and like different relationships you have with people um so i i want people to know that that's like a, a possibility and that is like real and and it Totally valid and great. And it's neat, like, seeing options become available to people, like, having that, it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you finding more questions? <laughs> no, I think, I think that's almost everything... Um, do you have any future or future predictions on LGBT people 
I guess, like, where do you think LGBT people are going in the future? Sure. Um, I think that we're making a lot of progress when it comes to um, trans rights. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is important that we're focusing on that uh, now. A lot like when we were focusing on marriage equality back in, you know, the early 2000s as like a goal um, for the community. Now, I think it's time that we're focusing on um, the rights of trans folks. Um, I'm hoping that maybe, you know, eventually we'll get to where people will it's be interested in, you know, bisexual trans uh Bisexual, pansexual, all of that. I'm hoping that people <laughs> find us. We're here. I <laughs> Quit think, amazing us. <laughs> I think it's like, I think when you step outside of Twitter, it's a lot easier for people, yeah. especially like bigger cities. But when people make it part of their identity, I think it can be like a lot more challenging. Like there's a lot of people that just go through life and they just exist and are happy mm -hmm. and free, but then those people that have made it part of their identity that get the brunt of all of the bad, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I think I have one more question. Um, who would you like to see on my podcast in the future? Oh if my god. I could interview anybody. <laughs> I could interview anyone. Oh my gosh. There's so many people. Uh, like, I'm just like going through. Oh, wow. Um, oh, you know who would make like an interesting interview? Lady Gaga. I feel like that would be a crazy interview. Maybe she's been like a queer icon for since like the 2000s. Like, mm -hmm. 2006, I think, ish. Like, yeah, that was before she even went big. Like, I remember, like, some, like, one of my friends was a DJ, and they listened to these early tracks before she was on the radio. And I was like, oh wow, this is like a really good song. Mm -hmm. And then it became the number one song. Like, Just Dance was like one of those songs that, like, I remember before it was big. I was like, oh wow. Yeah, and now she's yeah. like gone through like and done her circuit of like music, movies, more music, touring, next club, yeah. next club, next club. Like she's had mm -hmm. all the experiences. I want to yeah. say thank you so much for your time, and we thank can you. talk in Discord. I'm just gonna end my podcast quickly, and this episode will be live in about next Monday, so not like seven days from now. About 14 days from now, and when it's live on YouTube, I will be in the comment section. And you're more than welcome to be here as well, answering comments when it's like YouTube premieres, which I really love. Yeah. And I just need to quickly thank you again for being here, and thank you all for listening and hanging out with me. This podcast is available on queerculture.com. YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music. And until then, see you next week. Bye for now.